Savvy regards, once again, to the staff at Nemata, and Sally regards to visitors, those of you who have registered in the school so that you can access certain of the units, talks, and text. This is the main professor, and I'm here with a short orientation talk to a new course entitled Mythology 101. Now, it may come as a surprise to you that I'm doing this course. It certainly comes as a surprise to me, and that's what I'm here to talk about. So I'm going to tell you how it came about that I'm doing this course and just outline for you briefly how I see it developing and what is my ultimate intention. To begin, here's a little anecdote for you. It might give you a glimpse into the everyday life of yours truthfully. When I received the Terma of Gaia Awakening in August of 2008, it came in a massive download, which I have compared to a zip file. And the zip file had several files within it. There was, of course, foremost, the Terma of Gaia Awakening with the accessories of Planetary Tantra, including the Shakti Cluster app. Additionally, there were other files, and they may also be considered as accessories or spin-offs of the Terma. One of these is the Kali Dice Oracle. Now, I ask you to bear in mind how these zip files work. They are compacted, and they have an enormous amount of intel in them. So if I choose at any moment, if my Rigpa directs me to choose, I can open one of these files. When I do so, <laughs> I find myself standing in front of quite a massive engagement. That is certainly the case with the Kali Dice Oracle. Some of you may be familiar with various oracles that have been popular in the New Age or New Cage movement since the 60s. One of them is, of course, the Tarot deck, which has been around for a long time. I think there are upwards of 60, 70 versions of the Tarot deck. Then there are the runes that came out in the 60s or early 70s, I believe. They were extremely popular. You could purchase a little booklet along with a cloth bag which contained a version of the Celtic or Nordic runes. And you would cast the runes in order to receive guidance or direction on a certain issue, or you would put a question to the runes. Following that, there were the medicine cards, which happened to come out of Santa Fe. And they went out under the name of Jamie Sams, but I happen to know, being a Santa Fe insider, that they were not written by Jamie Sams. But they were immensely popular for a while, and that version of the Tarot deck drew upon Native American mythology, legend, and so forth. So there are many variations of runes that have appeared through the years, and some of them have enjoyed enormous popularity, particularly the Book of Runes from Ralph Blum. So now, there's the Kali Dice Oracle. And this is completely different from any other oracle or tool of divination that has ever been devised by the human mind. See, the standard procedure with a divination deck, for instance, the I Ching, which I worked with for many years, is that you ask a question to the oracle. You ask about an issue situation you're facing, or you ask about something on your mind, a question in your life, or a metaphysical or so-called spiritual question, and then you throw the oracle and you get the answer to your question. 
Kali Dice Oracle doesn't work that way at all. As a matter of fact, it's unique in this respect, well, several respects, but it's unique in this respect regarding its primary design. You do not ask a question to the Kali Dice Oracle. It gives you the question to ask. And that is a complete reversal and a total novelty regarding the structure and use of divinatory tools. So the Kali Dice Oracle is the project of my collaboration with Lydia of Damascus, aka Lydia Zumarjin. And there's some material for staff on Nemeta regarding the origin of this oracle and what's behind it. As Lydia of Damascus explains, one of the problems in Kali Yuga, this is a divination tool designed specifically for Kali Yuga, the shit mess that we're in right now. She explains that one of the problems in Kali Yuga is conversation. So you get a group of people together, two, three or more, and you're sitting around some evening facing the COVID regime or what the COVID regime would like to do to you and how it would like to rule your life. So if you've got time on your hands, so let's have a conversation. But what are we going to talk about? Well, it could happen that half a dozen decent, honest, and well-intentioned people in a room could have a conversation in the course of three hours that built and developed into what I'm going to call a consensual insight. In other words, the conversation would not be random. It would have a direction. It would go to something pertinent and urgent that needs to be seen at that moment. But the odds of that are what? Well, the odds are the odds. The odds might be low because it may so happen that the different individuals in the group have different priorities, obviously. They have different concerns. So the conversation bounces from one subject to another, one theme or another, and it doesn't actually take a direction and reach a point where everyone involved in the conversation can share at that moment a mutual insight, which is pertinent to each one of them, but also a transcendent insight. Kali Dice Oracle solves that problem. It's a tool that allows Kali herself to pose a question. And that question then becomes the focus of the conversation at the outset. And the takeaway is that everyone leaves the conversation with mutual insight about what has been discussed. So you see the oracle gives direction and coherence to conversations. That's one of its main purposes. That is its main purpose. Now, the Kali Dice Oracle is a project of Nemata. It's one of the projects intended to be developed as a kit. And in this kit, there is, first of all, a beautifully designed box with this Kali Yantra on it. And in this kit is a booklet or manual which contains the leading themes and topics of the throws and other orientation material. And there is a beautifully designed leather belt that you join to form a circle and you throw the dice in the circle. That already symbolizes that you are going to have a conversation within specific boundaries, which are defined by the oracle itself. Along with the kit, of course, come the dice. And there are two dice. And these are the special dice of Kali, which are called the dice of four pips. So they only have four numbers, not six. One through four, the dots or pips. And then they have the two letters, 
R, and G. So there are 21 throws in all combinations of the Kali Dice Oracle. In the manual, the operating manual, there are some short orientation pieces that describe the novel construction of this oracle. So this manual, written by Lydia of Damascus and yours truthfully, honestly, I have a little difficulty sometimes knowing who's who, it explains that the 21 throws fall into sets. So there's the one set, the two set, the three set, the four set, the R set, and the G set. And each of these sets comprises certain themes, particular themes. And then when you get into the individual throws within the set, like two, one, two, three, then you find the specific line, which is called, what is it called? The fatidic. The line that is the primary key of the oracle, which keys you or clues you to the question to ask and the topic to undertake in the conversation. In addition to the fatidic, there is a page of commentary elaborating on the question or theme proposed to you by the oracle. That is what needs to be talked about right now, right here, right now. That is what is pertinent in this moment, Kala. So it's really brilliant to know that the responsibility for setting the topic and direction of a conversation is coming from Kali, who is one of the main frequencies, frequency number one in the Shakti cluster, which is the spectrum of telluric instructional frequencies coming from the plenary sovereign intelligence of the earth itself, from the Aeonic Mother Sophia. Now, this is what happened about two months ago, I think it was might have been during July when I was writing the home story. Rigpa is a term from Zogchen, and it also carries over into Dog Zen. Now, Rigpa is that which directs your attention to any production of your mind. But Rigpa itself is not a product of your mind. So when you live in the course of a day, your rigpa takes you, directs you to certain things that require your attention. And it does so in a quite mysterious manner. So the oracle operates with your primary intellectual function of rigpa. And it prompts rigpa to go to a certain topic. So I decided to cast the oracle a couple of months ago. Now, the instruction manual explains how to use it for one person, for two, or three or more. So you can use it, one person can use it, but you don't necessarily have a conversation with yourself when you use it. You're having a conversation with Kali, that is to say, with the Aeonic Mother herself, and she is directing the conversation for you. So at that time, I threw the oracle, and I got G1. Oh, by the way, correction. The name for the signature line for each throw is called the Vatic, V-A-T-I-C, not the Fatidic. Fatidic is another word which shows up in the language of the user's manual. Vatic, it's a beautiful word, comes from what is it? I think Latin, maybe it's Greek. The word vetes. A vetes was a diviner, so we're talking here about mantique, the art of divination. So who is the diviner? Well, you are the diviner with the Kali Dice Oracle, but you are not alone. 
because the intelligence of the aeonic mother herself is supporting and directing you in the act of divination so that you know what's pertinent to you right here, right now, and you are shown, the oracle shows you, where to hold your rigpa in the immediate moment on that immediate day. So on that day, I got G1. And here is the Vedic for G1. To guide truly and wisely, teach what you live and then what you are learning. Well, that Vedic, that line really hit me right between the eyes because, of course, teach what you are learning or teach as you learn is the motto of the Sophianic School of Arts and Sciences, isn't it? But notice carefully the syntax. Notice the construction of the Vedic. To guide truly and wisely, teach what you live, comma, and then what you are learning. Well, that really put me in my place. Can you see that? I am so involved in the school and developing it that I tend to follow, to a large extent, the motto, teach as you learn. But the oracle told me, no, not exactly that. Yes, teach what you are learning, but first, teach what you live. So what do I live? Well, I live myth. I'm a walking, talking instrument of living myth. I can't remember when it was, sometime way back in Santa Fe days when I put the label on myself, comparative mythologist, and that is actually accurate. If I were in an academic or professional situation at a university, that would be my title professor of comparative mythology. So pretty much everything that I do is in that role. It stands in that role. So what I live is mythology. So from the moment that the oracle directed my rigpa to that fact, I felt strongly impelled to talk about mythology which of course I could do every day and every hour of every day for the rest of my life. When I published The Secrets Handbook in 1991, there was a little bio of me on the back cover and it said, he uses myth to teach self-direction. So, Myth is my foundation, and that's what I live. So that throw of the dice put me in a certain direction, which eventually led to bringing forth what is now an entirely new course, Mythology 101. Now, I'm offering this course to the public on John Lamb Lash YouTube in part to promote Nemata, of course. I want people to come to Nemata, so I make this material available for free. And there is then a link to Nemata to follow up on it. And there is a page on Nemata, on the visitors page, which presents notes on these talks. Now I'm revising and working on this page. If you go and look at it, you'll see a new, some new elements these notes, <laughs> these notes, wow, these notes could be extremely extensive. So here I am again. I don't know this habit of mine. I have to break this habit of launching into these vast projects. Truth is, I really can't help myself. It's just the force. 
the way that the force comes on, it comes on in waves. So this is yet another wave breaking over me or breaking through me, however you want to see it. And I'm delighted with it. And I find a lot of pleasure in being able to talk about a subject that I know, like the back of my hand and the flick of my eyelashes. And I know, due to the way that these talks are developing, that I am achieving one of my priority goals in life, namely to make the vast material of mythology available in a user-friendly way. So I'm teaching mythology, that's what I live. Now, if you're following this course, and I advise that you do so in sequence, you'll see that one of the talks is called Foreplay to M31. So that's a joke because each lesson, each installment in the course is indicated by a number, M1, M2, M3. Is it going to go to M31? I don't think so. I have more of a sense it will go to say M20 or M21 or M22, something like that. But of course, M31 is an allusion to the Andromeda galaxy and the control group, the control group of the current divine experiment unfolding here on Earth. Everyone who comes to these talks on YouTube, and they're also on alternative channels as well, will find a link directly to Nemata. You follow the link in this way. Go to the visitors page, scroll down to the curriculum panel, which lists the units. There's a block of units titled the Gnostic Front, and in that you find the illustrations, notes, references, citations relevant to the course. And that unit is titled Mythology 101 Notes. Now there's another project for Nemata. You could easily envision these talks and the notes as something like a large format book. They used to call it a coffee table book, you know what that's like. And so it would have a chapter for each of the lessons and in the chapter would be illustrative material taken from mythology and legends all around the world. And some pertinent quotations, for instance, the quotation from Plutarch, which I have listed here with the orientation talk. And so back in the old days, before the internet, I would have conceived this project as developing into a book. Now, it could become a book, beautifully illustrated, lavishly illustrated, and with a book that could be something like, you know, the CD or whatever of the spoken part of the, of the course. You get the picture. By the way, I want everyone to know that one of my priorities as the main professor of the school is to go to books I see a strong opportunity now to go back to books. And I advise you all, as a measure of getting out of IT and dependence on the internet, to think about reading books. There is a, uh, a department of the school called Terma Publishing. So there's a setup to produce books. However, as it stands right now, the staff and financing of Nemeta do not permit me to go forward with these such projects as these, including, as I said, the Kali Dice Oracle, which is a kit that comes in a box. But I see that changing in the beauty to come. And I see an opportunity growing for the projects that are on hold in Nemeta 
to be brought to concrete expression. So that's about it. That's all I have to say in this little orientation talk. To conclude, though, here's a little treat for you. You might be intrigued by the 21 throws. The dice of Kali are unique. Of course, a die is a cube and it has six faces. But the dice of Kali only have four numbers and then two letters, R and G. And of all those 21 throws, well, just think about it for a moment. One G, one R, two, four, four R, three G. Of all those variations, the final throw is R, G. That would sort of correspond to the card in the tarot deck, the 21st card, the world. There is, by the way, a somewhat loose correlation between the 21 throws of the deck and the 21 cards of the tarot, but I handle the tarot very carefully. won't get into that right now, but I do respect it. I used it enormously for years. I used it enormously. I used it intimately. Many conversations and sessions I had with friends in Santa Fe over the years were centered on throwing the tarot. Or is it tarot? Can't remember. But anyway, just as a treat and a tease, of course, I'll tell you the Vatic of the 21st throw, RG. It goes like this. The outcome of the world game turns on one life at a time. 